In the second video lecture of elliptical curve cryptography, we shall deal with the encryption and decryption process of elliptic curves. Now, why is elliptic curve used for the process of encryption and decryption? Now, this process actually provides a higher level of security or it provides the same level of security for reduced number of bits. So here, if you observe, here I have elliptical curve cryptography and you have the number of bits n and on the other side I've mentioned RSA and DSA and you have modulus size in bits. So you find that I get the same level of security with just 112 bits whereas I need 512 here and so on you have the entire table and what security I would get from using 15,360, I would get the same level of security by using 512. So therefore, you find that you get a very high level of security by using reduced number of bits and that is a great advantage. Right? So before we proceed with the encryption and decryption algorithm of elliptical curve cryptography, do not forget to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications of all the further uploads. Now, elliptical curve cryptography is an asymmetric cryptography or is a public key crypto system. And as I've already said, it provides very high level of security by using reduced number of keys. Now, the general form of any elliptic cu curve is y squared equals x cube plus ax plus b. Right? So, we have already seen that in the previous session. So y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b is the general cubic equation what we consider. So here, let us consider an elliptical curve as shown. Right? So let the elliptical curve E of A comma B operating in a modulus P, where P happens to be a prime number. Now on this elliptical curve, we consider two points P and Q. Now, if I join these two points P and Q and extend it, it would intersect at another point R on the elliptical curve and the elliptic curve can be extended up to infinity, right? The elliptical curve extends itself up to infinity, but we limit it to a predefined value n because I cannot consider all the values up to infinity, so I define and limit the value to n, right? So here I let E, P of A comma B the elliptical curve where Q and P are the points on the elliptical curve here. So therefore, I get the point Q which is equal to K into point P where P and Q are points on the elliptical curve and k is less than n. So k is an integer value which is less than n where n happens to be the limiting number here. So we need to limit the number to a finite value which is n. So the value of k is less than n. So therefore q equals k into p. Now if these two values p and k are given then it is easy to find the value of q but it is very difficult to find the value of k and this is called discrete logarithm problem for elliptic curves. So this concept is also referred to as a trapdoor function or a one-way function. So let's assume that I have x and you get y which is a function of x. So here, to get the value of y, which is function of x, is very easy. But from y to calculate x is a very hard problem, is a very difficult problem. Right? So this is referred to as a one-way function or is also referred to as a trapdoor function. Now it becomes easier if there is a given value, some value which is referred to as a trapdoor value, T. If that value is known, then we can find the value of x. Otherwise, this, the reverse process, is a very hard problem. Right? So, hence, even here, in this case, the value of q can easily be calculated if 
K and P are known. But if they are not known, then it is very difficult to find the value of K. So to find the value of K is very difficult if Q and P are known. And this is referred to as the discrete logarithm problem for elliptic curves. Well, so now when we talk about the process of encryption and decryption, as I've already told you, the elliptical curve cryptography, both the process of encryption and decryption, is asymmetric or it is a public key crypto system. So when we talk about public key crypto system, we have user A key generation and user B key generation and then we define the encryption algorithm and the decryption algorithm very similar to the hellman key exchange. Right? So in the hellman key exchange, if you do remember, we define the global variables and then we define user A key generation, user B key generation and then we also define the process of encryption and decryption. Right? So similarly here, we have the process of user A key generation, user B key generation and then you have the formula for encryption and decryption which we should see as we proceed. <clears throat> so first let me begin with elliptical curve cryptography. So we need to know the key exchange process and we define the global public variables. So the global so we define the global public elements. So here we define the elliptical curve EQ of A comma B. So we must remember that the elliptical curve equation is nothing but y square equals x cube plus ax plus b. So these are the values A and B here. And then Q happens to be a prime number. So this is nothing but the elliptic curve with parameters a and b. So we define the elliptical curve with parameters a and b. And then q is of course a prime number. So q is a prime number or an integer of the form 2 power m. So it is or an integer of the form 2 power m. And then G is a point on the elliptical curve whose order is a very large value of n. So G is nothing but a point on the elliptical curve whose order is a very large value of n. Right? So with these global public elements, let's begin with user A key generation. So as I've already told you, the process of key generation is very similar to the hellman key exchange where you have user A key generation and user B key generation. So let me begin with user A key generation. Now who is user A and user B? They are the two parties who are communicating with each other securely who, or who desire to communicate with each other securely. So here, since this is an asymmetric key cryptography or this is a public key crypto system, user A would select a private key. So he selects a private key NA, where of course NA is less than N. And then he calculates the public key. So calculate the public key, let me call this as PA, where PA is NA into G. Right? Okay. So next, we have the similar process which happens where you have user B key generation. So I have user B key generation. So again, select private key nb where of course nb is less than n and then calculate public key so the public key is calculated by user b similarly as a, a has calculated so p of b equals nb into g right so here we have the user a 
private key, public key, as well as the user B, private key, public key, and we know what happens. User A would keep the, the private key to himself, and the public key, of course, can be shared to B. And similarly, user B would keep the private key to himself, and the public key, of course, can be shared to user A. So with this process, let us see how the process of encryption and decryption can take place. So now, before we proceed with, so before we proceed with the process of encryption and de decryption, we have the secret key which is generated, very similar to the Feynman key exchange. So, calculation of secret key. So we know that user A will calculate the secret key. User B also will calculate the secret key and these two keys would be the same. So the secret key K is equal to his own private key NA. So calculation of secret key by user A. So K is equal to NA into P of B. So this is calculation of secret key by user A. And calculation of secret key by user B. So K equals his private key NB into the public key of A which is P. Right? So these two are individually calculated. So, let, so though they are individually calculated by user A and B, we find that the value remains the same. So you find that the whole process is very much similar to the Feynman key exchange. Right? So now users A and B have a secret key with which they would encrypt and they would decrypt and this secret key has not been shared but they have individually obtained the secret key by the process of user A and user B key generation where they share their public keys to each other. So using their own private key and using the other user's public key they would generate the secret key and these two values calculated by both the users A and B would be the same. So now let us move on to Elliptical curve cryptography encryption. Now let the message be M. So M is the message. In order to encrypt the given message M, what is done is the message M is actually encoded to obtain a point on the elliptical curve. So encode the message M to a point on the elliptical curve. So once this is done, so let that point be called as PM. So this point PM actually refers to the message M. Right? So you have the message M and that is being encoded to represent a point on the elliptical curve. So this point PM essentially is the message. So if I decode this point PM, I should get the message M. Now for encryption, we choose a random positive integer small k. So for encryption, so now to encrypt the given message m, what is done is we encode a given value m, the message m, to a point on the elliptic curve and that point is pm. Right? So now in order to encrypt this point pm. So this point pm actually represents the message m. So if I decode the point pm, I would get the message m. So for encryption, we choose a positive random integer small k here. And how is the process of encryption done? So when I encrypt, I get the cipher point. So the cipher point will be, let me call that a cm, which is equal to k into g comma pm plus k into pb. Right? So this is the public key of b. So public key of user b is used. Okay. So here we have k into g plus comma pm plus k into pb. So the, these are the two points. So these two points represent the cipher point here. Now, how do we go ahead with decryption? So if you observe, the cipher point is this value, random integer k into g, where g is the global public element, and pm happens to be the point. To that, what is being added? 
we multiply the public key of user B with the chosen positive random integer and these two points represent the cipher point. Now in order to decrypt what is done is this is the first point isn't it? So the first point is multiplied with the receiver's secret key. Now what is the receiver's secret key? The receiver's secret key is NB. So this is the public key, this is the private key, so I should say the private key in fact. So multiply the first point in the pair, so in this pair, by the receiver's private key. So I use the private key because it's easier for us to distinguish whereas this is the secret key so here it is the private key so what is done is I multiply k into g with n b where n b happens to be the receiver's private key which he has chosen or you can call it as the secret key as for your convenience and then subtract it from the second point in the pair so this is the second point so the second point in the cipher is pm plus k into pb and I need to subtract k into g into nb. So subtract this. So here the first point is being multiplied by the private key of the user b and then that is subtracted from the second point here. Now what do we observe? This value pb is the public key is nothing but nb into g so let me substitute so pm plus k into pb is nb into g minus k into nb into g so these two get cancelled so i am left with pm so what is obtained so i finally get the original point pm so pm is the point which corresponds to the message m so therefore, I know the encoding process, so therefore I get PM, so once I know PM, I decode it and get back the message M. So this is how encryption and decryption is performed by using elliptical curve cryptography and why is it important or why is it used? So because we can get the same level of security by reduced number of bits as we have seen here. So you have the entire table given in the textbook with installings and he has given a comparison of the number of bits of ECC compared with RSA and DSA. So you find that there's a huge reduction, especially you get the same level of security by using just 5112. Here it would be 15,360. Right? So I get the same level of security with reduced number of bits. So that is why ECC is much preferred and used. So this is the process of the encryption and decryption of elliptical curve cryptography. So probably in the next few video uh, segments we shall take a problem and we shall see how to perform encryption and decryption by taking an example with numbers. And in the next video segment that is lecture 3, we shall see how we can find the points P plus Q and 2P on an elliptic curve. So the first video segment we actually did find all the points on the elliptic curve in a given modulus P. So in the second video we had the description of the encryption and decryption and in the next video we shall discuss how to find the points P plus Q and 2P on the elliptic curve. So we have the formula to find the points P plus Q and 2P on the elliptic curve. So we shall take one or two examples. So that would be in the next video segment. So to key, do keep a watch on the third video segment on elliptic curves. And do not forget to like, share and subscribe and to view all the other videos on elliptic curves and on cryptography and network security. Do not forget to click on the eye icon or go through the playlist cryptography where you will find all the videos on cryptography and network security. Thanks for watching.